Princess on a Pillow here. I am here to do a review slash um, recap with my opinion on 90 Day Fiancé The Other Way, Season 6, Episode 4. It's titled, 10 Things I Hate About Moving. Inappropriate, um, well, not inappropriate, stupid, um, title. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't even relate to the daggone, um, episode. All right, well, my hair is sticking out right here and I don't like it. It's really annoying to me. Let's go. Josh and Lily first couple up. Josh arrived at Lily's newly renovated house um, after a three-hour taxi drive with flowers. <laughs> I still would like to know how much that taxi drive costs. Three hours? Oy. They greet each other very lovingly. She shows him around the fabulous house. He looked in the freezer and said, no ice cream? Lily says, no, no ice cream. I have no money. <laughs> she have no money to buy him ice cream, but because of she did because she did this elaborate um, renovation of the house, so she has no money to even buy ice cream. Okay, Lily, we got you. It begins. But Josh should have a little bit of money, shouldn't he? He did sell his car and his house. And when he quit his job, didn't he, like, cash in his 401k or something? And didn't he have some savings or something? He should have a little bit of money stashed somewhere, you know? And I know the ticket, the, the um, plane ticket to China and the three-hour taxi ride didn't, you know, eat up all his money. So he should have something. So Lily's, Lily's showing him around the, um, the house and her phone controls the lights. And there's instructions on how to do the lights, and it's in English. And then she, they have this toilet that has a bidet. And instead of stairs, they have elevators. And it's a very elaborate, expensive house. And this was all Lily's idea. So she should not complain about um, how much money she spent and, and being broke. She shouldn't have complained about that because this was these were these renovations were all her idea. She didn't have to be so elaborate with it. And she could have saved herself some money. And she didn't have to rush the job. Josh could have been there while the renovations were going on. I mean, what's the big deal? Josh said she's always telling him how much she spent on the house. He said it's exhausting and he doesn't want to hear it. And I don't blame him. He didn't ask her um, to do all these renovations on the house. He didn't ask for that. This is something she did all on her own. So the next morning, Josh let us know that um, his first night in China, he was too exhausted to make the beast with the two backs. And he feels guilty, so he has to make it up to Lily. Now, that would be very concerning to me. You haven't seen me in so many months or even years. I don't know how long it's been since they've seen each other. And he's too exhausted to give her some loving? Josh needs to step up his game. He needs to take some vitamins or take some no-dose. No-dose no or um, something. So anyway, they go to try on wedding clothes because they are having a huge, elaborate, traditional Chinese wedding. While they're trying on their ch uh, traditional clothes, they are disagreeing about who wanted the traditional Chinese wedding. And I think they both wanted um, the wedding, the, the, the elaborate wedding, because they're both divas. But then Josh is tired of her talking about she doesn't have any money, so he agrees to pay for her wedding dress. And they keep telling each other that they love each other. But I wonder if Josh, Josh is attracted to Lily. I wonder if he's attracted to her. I'm not sure about that. I think maybe he's attracted to a different type of sex. I mean, I don't want to call him that if he's not that. But that's the vibe I'm getting. Next up, James and... um. Her name is not Matilda, but I'm going to call her Matilda. Matilia or something. I'm going to call her Matilda. I'm going to call her Matilda. I know I am. But it's Matilia or something like that. So James is getting ready to leave for Indonesia. He learned that he, we learned that he finally told his parents that he was going to Indonesia and not coming back. 
He said his mother cried and his father is not speaking to him. Which is weird to me. How can you not speak to your son because he wants to live in another country with his wife? If the father is pissed because James is leaving the business, why? Why is he pissed because James is leaving the, he left the business before and came back? So why are you pissed? And the business is not going to crumble because James left. If it's a good business, it doesn't crumble because one person leaves. That's not much of a business if it crumbles because one person leaves. So um, James' friend drove him to the bus station. He has to take the bus to the airport and then take two planes, I think, to Indonesia. I think it's two and a half days of traveling for him. So on his way to the bus station, James told his friend that he will be staying with um, Matilia's family and seven people live in the house. Seven. James will be, re he will be returning back to the States soon because this is not going to work. I'm sure he'll be returning soon. It's not going to work. I just don't see it working. His friend said, holy cow, seven people? <laughs> James told us that if things don't work out, um, coming back to the States would be emotionally traumatizing. Well, James, you need to prepare yourself for that because um, that's what about, is about to happen. That's exactly what's about to happen. You're coming right on back to the States. He should have talked Matilia into... Staying there or moving a couple of um, state over or in a, a city over or something. So another state where it's not so much, much snow, it's not so much, it's not as cold or something. Because now he's going to a country where he doesn't speak a language, doesn't have a job, and he's going to be living with seven people. That's crazy. He's going from the top to the bottom. And it's just because Matilia is selfish and homesick. I don't think there's anything wrong with her. With her health. I think she's faking. There's nothing wrong with this girl. I wonder, I know, I, I wonder if I would ever move to another country uh, for someone. I don't think I'll do that. I've, I'd never be so damn foolish to do something like that, I don't think. So Matilia has been back in Indonesia for five weeks and she's having the time of her life. She missed Indonesia and she's extremely happy for being back. She said her family thinks that she's only visiting for a month. But she's been there for five weeks. That's over a month. She wants to tell her family that they are moving to Indonesia when James gets there. So her family doesn't know that they're moving there. Her family thinks she's just visiting. Her family don't even know James is coming. <laughs> The two of them, her and James, they believe in waiting until the last minute to drop bombs on their family because they know their family won't agree with what they got going on, with the plans that they're making, the stupid plans that they're making. These two are two sneaky little liars. So Matilia, she, um, she decides to tell her um, sister that her and James are moving to Indonesia. She don't tell her parents because she's scared because she knows it's... Um, you know, they're not going to agree with that. Um, she told us that telling her parents would be considered good news. You're right, Matilda. You, Matilda, you know they wouldn't be happy with that. They got seven people living on their roof. Now you two that they have to support? Come on. So her sister asked her why she wants to move back to Indonesia. She said she missed Indonesia and she uh, she's always sick in the States. She said after drinking herbal tea for a week, she feels better. She's all cured. After drinking herbal tea for a week, she's no longer sick. She's full of shit. She was not sick. She just wanted to go back to Indonesia. Her sister told her to visit, but don't live here. Her sister um, can't understand why James would leave his job to move to Indonesia, where it's hard. It's harder to find a job. Matilia is a spoiled, rotten brat. Because she is the youngest, and she missed everyone treating her like she's special. She made James move, leave everything in the States and move to Indonesia. To a place where he has nothing. Um, he will feel, he'll feel like a nobody because he'll be dependent on her family for everything. But she doesn't tell her family who is already struggling with seven people under the roof. She don't tell the family. 
She's being selfish to herself. To, she's being selfish to her family. And she's being selfish to James, her husband. Just because she wants to feel comfortable. She told her that James will be there the next day. And she didn't tell anyone because it's a surprise. I think Matilda is an ass and I don't care for her. She knows that she what she's doing is selfish, but she doesn't give a damn. The sister told her not to live with the parents, not to live with the parents, find a place to rent. Matilda told her sister that she have to, they have to live with the parents until they can find a place to rent because they have no money. The sister told her that there will be a lot of conflict living with the family. I don't understand why James is so desperate for love that he allows selfish women to um, control his life. I don't understand that. This is the second woman he dropped everything and moved for. Next is Shekinah and Scherfer. So it's the next morning after Shekinah arrived in Turkey. Even though they argued the day before, we found out that they um, that, that didn't stop them from making the beast with the two backs because they um, were both deprived for three whole months and it's the only enjoyment they get out of their relationship. She is um, telling him to get rid of the empty liquor bottles and his black book. But instead, he told her he wants her to wax his back. While waxing his back, he told her that he tracks her periods and that he um, dreams about her seeing her poop. Now, the um, editors, they could have cut that out. I don't know why they kept that in, but they should have cut that out because nobody want to hear that. She kind of asked him if he told his family that they applied for the K-1 visa. He told her he did not tell them. He told us that applying for the K-1 visa was Shekinah's idea and he plans on changing her mind. She kind of is, not, she's not a smart person. That's why Sharifah, and that, she, she kind of is not a smart person. And Sharifah knows it. Sharifah knows it. He knows that she's not smart and he knows how to manipulate her into getting what he wants. He can easily manipulate her. And I think that's what he loves about her. So now that he has her here in Turkey, he told her that he does not want to move to the States. But it doesn't make any sense to me because if they had applied for the K-1 visa, um, that takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of paperwork. It takes a lot of interviews. It takes a lot to apply for the K-1 visa. I think this storyline is fake. I don't think they applied for any K-1 visa. I think this is a fake storyline. The producers, they don't think that the blue black book and the little bottles, the liquor bottles is enough uh, for the audience to hold the audience interest. So they throw this K-1 visa thing in to spice it up a little bit more. And you know what? Nobody, nobody um, think that they applied for the K-1 visa. That takes a lot. And they don't have the money. You know, but we'll run with it anyway. We'll run with it. We'll pretend that it's a storyline. Next up, it's Statler and Dempsey. Statler is ready to go to um, England. She claimed that she was able to get an advance from work in order to get the £6,000 to purchase the van. Statler's friend helped her with her storage, and all they do when they're talking is bash Dempsey. They said Dempsey will um, be doing nothing while... She'll be doing nothing and she won't be contributing to the cost of living or she won't be contributing to anything because she won't have a job. She won't have a job and she'll get she'll get to lounge around and explore Europe while Statler works. Um, Statler agreed to this. This is what Statler agreed to. So she needs to quit bitching and do what she told Dempsey she would do and move her ass to England like she said she would. So it's the next day and Statler is on her way to the airport. The friend is driving her. The same damn friend is driving her to the airport. And they're still Statler is still talking shit about Dempsey. She's telling her friend that Dempsey is using her because Dempsey couldn't afford to live the van life without her. She wouldn't be able to live the van life on her own. So Statler feels like Dempsey is using her. You didn't feel this way when she um suggests that um you sell everything and travel with her around the world? Um, you didn't feel this way before, but now you feel this way? I can't stand Statler. I really can't stand her. I think she's full of shit. You either love Dempsey and you want to be with Dempsey or you stay your ass in Texas living in your apartment. You made your bed, now you got to lie in it. 
that was the end of the episode. This is the end of my um, review. Thank you so very much for watching. Princess on the Pillow here. Bye.